and asking, and that's fine. She, she um, still believed. She just wanted to know how he's going to tell her. Verse 35, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And so it was, as it was written in St. John, I'm sorry, as it is written in Isaiah, as it is written in Isaiah chapter 7, which we covered very recently, and we're going to turn there again. And in Isaiah chapter 7, prophesied long before, <clears throat> we have in verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Well, that's the same thing that Gabriel said to uh, John and Mary, um, Zacharias and Mary. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And so it was being Yahweh with us, which is to say Yeshua, which is to say Yahweh Savior. How precious the word of God. You see, we were prepared long ago for this. The fact that that conception would take transpire. It's just that people have a little trouble putting it all together sometimes, keeping it in line. Verse 36, returning to Luke chapter 1. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who is called bar who was called barren. There it was December the 25th. And, but do you notice something strange there? Um, Gabriel, it wasn't some person that said Elizabeth was her cousin. That was Gabriel. It was the angel of God said, your cousin Elizabeth. Now, now let's analyze just a moment. You see, the reason Luke is so concise, there is a great deal of information within this that you must acquire, absorb, accept with understanding. I mean, Elizabeth, it's already said that she met all the credentials to be the wife of a Levitical priest. And it stated very clearly that she was of the daughters of Aaron. That makes her a Levite, not of the tribe of Judah, not of David's tribe. So what's happening here? Then we understand if Mary's father, Hila, who was of the tribe of Judah, was of the tribe of Judah, then how did Mary get to be a cousin to Elizabeth? There's only one way. And again, it was Gabriel that said this, not some, not some uh, uh, statistician. It was Gabriel, the archangel. There's only one way, and it's very simple. Is Elizabeth's mother and Mary's mother were sisters. And Heli of the tribe of Judah, which is legal, married a Levitical girl who was the mother of Mary. Meaning Mary was both of the Levitical uh, line as well as of Judah. And with God being the father of that son, the only begotten, it meant what was joined together here in this was both the priest line and the king line whereby it could be said that this child, this conception, would be the king of kings as well as the Lord of lords. In other words, both king and priest forever 
after the order of Melchizedek. So there you have it. You know, in this same, if you go, many would say, well, it says in Matthew chapter 1. It doesn't matter what it says in Matthew chapter 1. That's Joseph's genealogy in who, in, to whom Mary is betrothed. You find quite the contrary. You find Mary's genealogy right here in the book of Luke in chapter 3. And it's made very clear to one with understanding. In chapter, you're not going to have it, just turn to chapter 3, verse 23. And what does it say? And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being in Perin, as was supposed. That means by law, got it? As by law, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. In other words, there were no other children in that family, and, the, and Mary's lineage would pass to her husband. But you will notice there's no begats here. Because as things are the same today as it was yesterday, they're in-laws, not begats, but in-laws. Joseph was uh, uh, Heli's son-in-law, but Mary was his daughter. Okay, So it's really quite simple. Again, as by law, that means uh, the law of marriage, in-laws. In laws by law. That's what it means. That's what the Greek is very specific about. And at the same time, while we're here, on, on to verse 31, there's something you should be, make note of that is separate in this genealogy and the one in Matthew 1 of Joseph. Is that Mary came through, as you will notice in verse 31, which was the son of Nathan, not Solomon, but Nathan which was the son of David. In other words, Mary, the virgin, came through the lineage of Nathan, not Solomon, and therefore being the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Holy One, the Son of God, the only begotten. Then we see was um, both of the tribe of Levi and also of the tribe of Judah. And this is why Paul himself would say to you concern, in, in the great book of Hebrews, as was supposed that he was of the tribe of Judah, but was forever after the order of Melchizedek. You see, he knew. Paul knew. What's important, Gabriel knew. God gives us all this information but he expects you to take the nativity serious enough that you check it out. Well, should we celebrate the November the 25th? Why would you want to be a Scrooge? That's the day the Holy Spirit began dwelling with us. That was the day of conception. 